Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariongi. Welcome to our today's biology lesson. And today we are discussing transport in plants and animals. During our previous lesson, uh, we introduced uh, the chapter objectives. What is a learner expected to know as far as transport in plants and animals is concerned? Then we also discussed the first objective, which is the meaning and the necessity of a transport system. So today, I want us to go specifically and look at transport in plants. Now, when you talk of transport in plants, uh, we have uh, different categories of plants. We have what we call the herbaceous plants. We also have higher plants, uh, also called the woody plants, and so on and so forth. So in this case, before we understand the transport system that is found in a plant, it is necessary to understand what kind of a plant are we talking about. I want to divide the plants into two categories. And I'll say that in lower plants, in lower plants, which are also known as herbaceous plants, e.g., we have uh, things like the mosses and the liverworts. For those ones, because they are very, very small, diffusion is enough to transport materials within the entire plant. So for the mosses and the liverworts, diffusion is enough to transport materials within the entire plant. But when you talk of higher plants, in higher plants, e.g., for example, the flowering plants, diffusion alone is not enough. is not enough and therefore uh, they need a more elaborate system is not enough but an additional transport system is necessary. And the reason why we are saying that additional transport system is necessary is to make sure that materials reach up to the farthest tissue. Because we are talking about uh, very large plants whereby uh, nutrients need to be transported from the leaves, water needs to be transported from the roots, and so on and so forth. So they need a more elaborate transport system. So that once that system transports those materials, now diffusion will be easier to take place. So diffusion alone is not enough. Unlike the lower plants where diffusion can take place even without a, a transport system. Now, um, we, the transport system in plants... is called the vascular tissue or it's called the vascular system and for us to understand this system better it is important to look at the various areas in the plant where the vascular tissue is found 
In this case, we shall look at the root and we shall look at the stem. We shall also look at the, uh, the leaves whereby we'll get this particular vascular system. And then we, we'll be able to learn how does it carry out the transportation of materials or which materials are transported by this particular system. Now, so we look at the structure of the root or basically we look at the root structure. <coughs> now, um, before we understand the root structure, it is important to discuss what are the functions of the root. The root has a number of functions and the first main function of the root is absorption of water and mineral salts. We know that the roots are the ones that are in, the, in contact with the soil and that's where water is. That's where the mineral salts are. So basically it is the roots that absorb those mineral salts and water through the root hairs. So the first function is absorption of water and mineral salts. The other function of the root is anchorage. Anchorage means support. It is the roots that anchor the plant in the, in the soil. So in this case, anchorage or support is another function of the roots. <coughs> now, <coughs> number three, we have what we call uh, special roots. And those special roots, they are meant for storage storage of materials. If you take something like uh, the tap root in carrots is a storage uh, area. So uh, the tap root is swollen with food reserves that are stored there. So the root is also a storage area and also we have some that are modified for gaseous exchange e.g. what happens in mangroves mangroves are plants that grow at the shores of the sea oceans and so on and so forth and sometimes those plants are submerged by water during high tides. So as a result, they have roots that are specialized for gaseous exchange. And those ones, we shall mention them uh, much later as we continue. But basically, those are the four main functions of the root. The other thing, as we understand the root structure, we need to look at how does the root look like internally, internal structure of the root. Internal structure of the root. So we'll have two diagrams, one showing the dicotyledonous root and the other one showing monocotyledonous root. So the first diagram So this one is a transverse section 
through a dicotyledonous dicotyledonous root a transverse section is a section whereby if this is the root if you cut it across that is what is called a transverse section but if you take the same root and then you cut it vertically you form what is called a longitudinal section so we shall look at both scenarios but for now we'll start by uh, understanding the transverse section uh, through a dicotyledonous uh, root so on the outside we have the root hair so there are root hairs all over and those root hairs are on a single layer of cells called the epidermis beneath the epidermis we have the cortex then we have the endodermis under the endodermis we have the pericycle and then we have uh, can put this uh, up here we have the xylem and then we have we just change a little bit the arrows should not cross so that's a uh, one of the requirements when we are drawing diagrams so that is the phloem then we have the xylem and these two collectively they are referred to as the vascular bundles we we'll also have another diagram showing the transverse section through a monocotyledonous root then we can compare So this is a transverse section through a monocotyledonous root so we still have the root here we have the epidermis we have the cortex the endodermis underneath we have the pericycle and then we have the xylem and the phloem which we have called the vascular bundles so there are slight differences between a monocot root and a dicot root and especially in terms of the arrangement of the vascular bundles in terms of the arrangement of the xylem and the phloem uh, in the case of a dicotyledonous root the xylem is star shaped xylem is star shaped and the phloem alternates at the arms of the star on the other hand 
uh, in a monocot uh, root. The vascular bundles are arranged in a ring around the center. They are arranged in a ring around the center in an alternating manner. So we have the phloem, the xylem, the phloem, the xylem in that particular uh, manner. So we are going to have a short assignment on this and then we'll uh, proceed later. So there are three questions. The first question, state four functions of the root. We have uh, discussed them. What is the transport tissue in plants? And number three, explain why mosses and liverworts, those are plants, do not have a transport system. So we're going to stop there. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>